So in this section of the module, we're going to go through the entire production process really quickly uh, before you get to working on it. Um, I already talked about in detail about how planning is uh, the most successful thing. Wear a producer hat, a fundraiser hat, a composer hat, a marketer hat, a networker hat, everything, right? I can't emphasize, emphasize this enough that just the fact that you have it all planned out as a musician will shock people and get all sorts of people more interested in you than you would otherwise, because most musicians are not organized at all. Um, so, for example, on this song that we're about to do some work on, um, if you're going to ask a bunch of musicians in a certain genre, mine is children's music, you want a bunch of children's music stars to work on it, don't ask them all at once in a spam email. I asked the two people I knew would say yes first, right? I kept them on board. Then I email the third person or call them and say, hey, X, Y, and I are doing a climate change song. All of a sudden, it seems like something the cool kids are doing. And that person says, okay, I'll do it. And then you keep going from there. That's how you get people involved uh, uh, personally. And there's always a next person. So do not worry about the people who say no. There were certainly people who said no. Uh, the only crucial person to your project is you. I hear this mistake all the time where somebody pitches a project by saying, I'm working with Bruno Mars's engineer and whatever. All you just told me is that you know you're not important. And you are important. You, you just devalued yourself to the engineer. You're the only crucial person in your project, right? And act that way. Throw in the Bruno Mars crap afterwards. That's impressive. But only after the project's about you. People actually want the project to be about you if they're going to work on it. Um, so um, I will also tell you uh, just random planning elements include your image, right? When I do Dr. Noise albums, I always have really awesome looking 3D animated graphics because that communicates to people. Everybody knows that 3D animated stuff costs a lot of money. They're like, oh, this is a... This is a high-end production. Um, that's because that's how I'm trying to position myself. Um, and that's the kind of music that I want to do for kids. If I was a punk artist, there's no way in hell I would have artwork like that. Nobody wants to work with a well-funded punk artist. Nobody wants to listen to well-funded punk music. So think about what your image is before you even start, right? Um, now, we're going to get to songwriting. Um... I personally, because I'm an obsessive planner, I my favorite instrument is my brain. Um, I generally don't sit down and start recording a demo or a song until the song's basically done in my head. That doesn't mean it won't change when I'm tracking. It means it will change from a plan instead of I'm just making stuff up as I go. Now, there are different musicians who do different things. Uh, if I was a world-class jazz virtuoso guitar player, I might have a completely different approach. Um, so I'm not saying that's the right thing to do. Um, but it, it is useful. Um, it's certainly useful if you're managing studio time and production time and stuff like that. So I like to plan all my stuff. I like to do demos, MIDI demos of songs before I send them out to musicians. Uh, now we're going to get into the mix. All right. So now we are on my incredibly high tech, shoving my iPhone on a tripod on my keyboard in front of my computer to show you the screen with iPhone sound, uh, you're welcome. One day maybe I'll get all green screeny like Professor McGuire, but right now this is what we got. So, recording the song, the first thing I would do if I were you in your situation is I would master a DAW. It should probably be Pro Tools because that's the DAW that's the standard in the industry and it's the one that we feature the most at CU Denver. Of course, having said that, I'm using Logic. It could be Logic, you can see it in front of you, it could be Live. It doesn't really matter which one it is, they're all really good. Just get really good at one of them. And for your student career, I think you should start with Pro Tools, okay? But in Logic here, uh, I'm pretty good at Logic. Um, you can see there are a gazillion tracks in this. I always um, demo songs first. I actually did this about six months ago, and I was gonna, um, Replace some of these with real instruments. I did, uh, it ended up then COVID hit. I did my own horn section with a bunch of saxophone parts. Here they are right here. Let's get this now. I did uh, the drums in Logic, which we'll talk about in a moment. 
uh, the bass, I played guitar parts. I also had some unusual instruments like uh, the Turkish, I don't even know what this is called, but it's guitar-y. Uh, let's see. The Turkish oud lute, of course. Um, and I have some synth parts. And then all of these, right here in the middle, these are all vocals that I recorded to demo the song. And then up here is just tons and tons of vocal parts from all different artists, as I told you, I invited. What I did is I invited any professional children's musician to be a part of this. And I decided immediately I wasn't going to discriminate between famous and not famous. So there's everybody from Grammy winners to just regional people. As long as you've had a professional album, you're on if you wanted to be on. Um, so we have sort of this unified message about uh, climate change, which is kind of cool. Um, and I enjoyed working with all of these people. Um, you can see I have them all muted at the moment because really, let's start with this. This is the demo I made where it's just my vocals. We'll just listen to a little. All right, everybody. You can hear the saxophones as a horn section. So and all of these vocals are going to be replaced by different lead singers. In fact, they have been replaced up here, we just have them muted at the moment. Here's all the vocals right here, my sort of demo vocals. All right, now, so what I'm almost sure is going to end up happening, happening is a lot of the group vocals are going to end up being me anyways, because my singers, some of them sent group vocals in, some of them only sent their uh, solo vocals. I'm going to try to make them into a choir. But honestly, it's probably going to sound pretty mismatchy, and I'm probably going to end up using a lot of my vocals to make sure the, the uh, harmony sections sound uniform. Uh, but don't tell anybody. Um, so, but I will definitely use everybody's solo vocals. Now, the first thing, after I record a bunch of tracks, and we, we talked in the last module about setting preamps and stuff, so we're not going to do all that. But... The first thing I do is organize the tracks in a logical order so it's not misery when you have all of these tracks to figure out what the hell is going on. So I like to do it uh, because I'm sort of an old orchestral score guy. I sort of like to do it in the order that it would be an orchestral score. So if you can see down here, car one, car two, car three, I've got the sound effects down there. Then I've got the drum kit. Here, let me make these a little bigger. I've got the drums, bass. I actually have two different kinds of basses. Then I have uh, keyboards, electric guitars. I have these uh, synth guitar things, some synth chords. Then I have the saxes up above, and then I start doing all the vocals. Here's my group vocals. Uh, and then up here, we get to all the other people's vocals who are muted at the moment. Um, whatever your system is, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as you have a system so when you have all these tracks like this, it's easy for you to find what you're looking for. And I would add this, I've got some muted tracks down here that I don't need, so I'm going to go ahead and hide those. Um, we can, you can go, let's see, where is it? There, H, 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 I'm going to hide all those, then you hit this, and now they're not going to show up anymore, okay? Um, Let's check out, let's go sort of instrument by instrument here. Let's start with the drums. One of the really cool things in Logic is they have these amazing virtual drummers. And when I'm on a project like this where it ends up, you know what, I'm not even going to hire a drummer. I'll solo the drums. 
what I end up doing is doing a lot of programming. So it's not just the default of what they have. You can see in here, I've got these broken up into a lot of different bits. And you can actually see right there, I've changed uh, the parameters for here when I select this. Boom, you can see there's toms playing in this one, but there's not toms playing in this one. This is sort of a, a, sort of a drum lick, so I'll, we'll play right there. So even though I'm using Logic's drummer, I'm making a lot of changes and playing a lot of different things, so ultimately it sounds pretty darn good. Now I've got, I've got the Liverpool bass here, you can hear it sounds pretty good. And then in the chorus, I double it with this bass. Now it's out, okay? So actually I didn't double it in the chorus, I doubled it at the end of the verse. I don't even know my own song. All right, so now with all the instruments, where did it go? There it is, okay. Now you can hear, I played electric guitar here, and I played what I call metal guitar there. I've got one pan to the left, one pan to the right, even though I haven't really started mixing yet. And I recorded both of those with my Line 6 Variax. So here it is with uh, all the instruments. Here's the synths. Take that out. Now, I'm going to fast forward to the bridge. In the bridge, I added this instrument. Instead of using electric guitar, I actually played uh, this Turkish lute and something called the Guzhang. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Um, and it sounded pretty cool. Here's what they sound like. In the beginning, there was a splendid sky. And then came humankind. And then it's doubled here. And they built machines Doubled octaves. And then it comes in in the Guzhang. Again, apologies if I don't pronounce that correctly. Doubled the octaves there. And you can hear my actual guitar in the background. I've still got a real guitar in there. Right? And you can hear, that's my narration, but eventually I'm going to replace it with Skidoo's narration, the rapper we talked about in the class. Now here, let's go over here. Here's all the saxes I recorded. Uh, if you happen to be sort of a jack of all trades on some instruments, maybe master of none, but jack of many, um, you can do a lot of your own recording. If not, it's a great idea to develop relationships with other students. Um, uh, and professionals who know how to play different things and you can trade off, you know, you can uh, help them with your engineering skills and they could play trumpet or or you can play bass and they can play sax or whatever. Um, I have found that there's a lot of creative things you can do. I generally, for big projects uh, where I'm putting real money in, I hire an awesome horn section. But when I don't have that money for a project like this one, I'm trying to uh, do it for charity and not spend a lot. I can be my own horn section. Here are six of my alto parts, and here's the horn section. It's just me on my alto. And here it is with the music, unsoloed. backup vocals right there. I'll probably end up using most of those. You can see the horns here. But 
Now, you may, you probably know about comping tracks already, but you can see here, I've recorded several, actually, I, I just used all four from one take right there. Um, let's see if I can find one where I switched. Nope, I used all of those there too. Okay, I'm better than I thought at playing those things. Um, but I can find one. I remember we recorded my daughter's vocals the other night in our class, and we did some switching. Where is it? Maybe it's here. There we go. Here's a few takes. So let me... You can see I'm using different takes here. So this is our second take. They decided smarts were better than farts. It's very elevated uh, narration, as you can see. The third take, it goes up to there. And they built machines that used... Okay, so you can hear all that. Now, we haven't even mixed this stuff yet. And then I will show you all of these vocals here. These are all vocals by my guest uh, uh, vocalist. This one guy who's a great guy. He sent me one, two, three, four. It's something like eight different takes. And I need to go through all those to figure out the best. Or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll find one and I'll just go, I'm using that one. Um, but you can see these are all different vocalists. Let me zoom this out a little. Here we go. And I'm going to go through each one has a different mic sound. They, they all recorded in their own studios. So, for example, let's listen to Marsha's voice. <laughs> Okay, there's her. This is from the band Micah and Me. Let's see, he's only right there. Let's see what he's got. Parent from that big stream to build a world so strong and clean. So you can hear a totally different sound. That one has really high frequency. Frankly, it, it, uh, the, it doesn't sound as high quality as Marsha's. And I'm gonna have to try to mix those together so they sound like they're in the same song which is going to be the big challenge in this song. Let's go to um, uh, Lori Enriquez here. She's an excellent Grammy-nominated uh, uh, sort of jazz pop singer for kids. Here's hers. We toot our dreams. Kiss them goodbye. Actually, that's me singing hers. My bad. Let's see if I can find hers. That was the demo I made for her. Let's see if I can find her. Here she is in real life. Lori and Lori. I have two of hers somehow. Let's see what I got. Okay, here she is. We toot our dreams, kiss them goodbye, and hardly ask why. So that one has a little different sound. Lucy Kalantari won the Grammy two years ago. She's an amazing singer. Let's see what she sounds like. Yeah. No more farting, our farting's the party. Again, it's very, very elevated. Let's see what her, oh, here's her uh, vocals. Cause positive energy is something that shines so bright to me. It's our better nature shining through. So you can hear she's got a great voice. Let's put her in the mix. Yeah, positive energy. There she is. Now, as you can see over here, I don't have any effects on any of these vocals yet. I don't have anything on this stuff. Um, and I'm going to uh, give you guys a chance to uh, have a crack at mixing some of these things. In a song like this, I would start with the instruments. Now, there are people who say, oh, you always need to start your mix right at the outset with the vocals. Um, because the vocal is the main instrument. Um, I, I That makes sense in theory, except if you look at this, we've got like, I don't know what it is, 40 vocal tracks, and that just sounds overwhelming for me. 
So what I am going to do is I am going to mute all the vocals except for the instruments. Um, and then I'm going to try to get what I think sounds like a reasonable sort of premix with these instruments only. And then the next thing I'll do is I'll add my vocals because I like the sound of my mic and the way, um, the way, that, the way that sounds. So I'm gonna put my vocals in and then I, after I get that sounding pretty good and sort of what I call a pre-mix, I'm not gonna automate a bunch of stuff, but I'll at least get it sounding good. Then I would start adding these other vocalists in one by one, trying to get them their sound to, to at least sound like it's in the same universe as the, the vocals that I did. I'm not going to make an effort to make them sound exactly the same. Part of the appeal of this song is all the different personalities and voices coming in. Um, but they have to sound like they're at least on the plant, same planet for a song about the planet. Okay, So... Um, as you can see, and, and then when you automate, I'm going to have to make these tracks bigger so that I'll do this and then I'll delete it. But so that you could draw automation lines in here, um, you have to make these tracks bigger and then obviously you can't see as many. Um, and then when you're working on the main mix, you go back and you make them smaller so you can see more stuff. Now I have to go back and undo that before I forget what the heck I just did. Boom, undoing it all. Goodbye automation, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna take a break here and we'll get back in a moment. So in the last video we were talking a little about vocals. Um, you, whether you're recording vocals or instruments, you will often be in a room by yourself being your own recording engineer and uh, singer or uh, performer, uh, especially during the uh, pandemic. Um, so. Uh, what I do in here is I have my vocal ISO booth over there. I use these headphones right here. I put them on and I turn my volume down in my studio here. We're going to turn it back up for now. Um, and then what I use is a thing called cycle record in Logic that pretty much any DAW have. Let me see if I can get this back on here. <laughs> Come on, Bertha. Uh, there we go. Uh, okay, there we go. Very high end. Okay, so you can see, just as an example here, I've got a bunch of different vocal tracks here. It's Chorus Women 1, Corey, Chorus Women 2, Corey. These are all the scratch tr tracks I recorded for the women to learn their parts, and frankly, I'm probably going to end up just using me singing on a lot of them. There we go. Um, so you do this cycle record. In Logic, you just grab this thing up here. Um, you can make it as long as you want. And what that means is you're only going to record in this section. And then it will go back to the start. Here's why that's so useful. Let's just make it a tiny cycle for now, just for demo purposes. The reason it's so useful is you can take multiple takes by yourself without going back and forth between the console and where you're recording. So, for example, if we record here, we're gonna record on this track right here. Obviously, I'm not singing, but it is recording. You can see it going over in the red. When it ends, boom, it goes back and records again. So if I open this up, you can see it's doing new comp takes. Boom, it just added that one. Boom, it keeps adding them. Okay, now, obviously, that's too... I'm going to undo all that. Obviously, those are too short. So, but what you do is you start a measure early, and you let it go. You sing the whole thing, and then you make it go maybe a measure... That's way longer than I want. Let's try this over. Maybe a measure longer. And then you can just sing the whole chorus have an extra measure at the end, an extra measure at the start, and then you sing it again. What I like to do, if you look here at, at my takes, uh, let's find one with better takes. There's three takes, okay, you can see here, three full takes, one, two, three. Um, I like to sing the whole thing, and I highly recommend that even if you're dubbing in just a few lines or words, it almost always sounds phony or crappy if you just sing like three notes or one line. <clears throat> so it, what I tend to do is, I, you can see I did it here. I recorded this chorus 
three times in a row. I don't know why I just did these two here, but three times in a row. And then what I'll do is I'll go and I'll audition them line for line and hear which one is the best and put that one. It's positive in. energy. Now you notice, actually, I decided I sang all of this one fine, so I just kept one take. Let's see if I can find, usually I'll switch. Oh, that one's only one take too. Uh, so I was better than I thought there. Let's try the, okay, here's one. You can see in that one and in this, here's one. Okay, let's try this one. You can see in this one, I thought these notes were the best. Then I popped up to that, popped down to that, popped to that, down to that. Every, where it's blue is where you've opened up the window to that sound. So let's hear what it sounds like. Take one, take two, take one, take two. Now I'll shut up and you'll hear it sounds like one take. Okay, so now if we unsolo that and put it with everything else. And you can hear I actually have a bunch of effects on those vocals already, although I haven't mixed them at all. Now, my mixing philosophy, which is uh, in terms of volumes, it's not necessarily the same as everyone else's. I like to automate vocals a lot and just compress them a little. Some people slap a gigantamongous compressor on it and just boom, that's done. You level the volumes and that's it. I like to get what I call sort of a premix of all the instruments, which is set a basic level where they sound good. And I'll put a little compression on instruments and vocals and stuff. But I like to ride the vocals a lot. I, I, I don't know if it's just old school or what, but I, I feel like it gives a little more expression. I have not done that in this song yet, so I'm going to turn this off for a moment and switch to another song where I've done that, just so you can see all the little minute uh, uh, automations that you can do in, a, in, in vocals that really sometimes make a difference. All right, so I'm going to show you a little about how I like to automate vocals, and I'm going to do it with a song that I did just a couple weeks ago. Um, I was actually recording a different song, and my friend Nathan Gunn, who's a, a very acclaimed uh, uh, musical theater and opera singer, I knew that his daughter is about 22 as a cellist, and I knew they had recording stuff at their house. So I called him up and I said, hey, uh, can I get your daughter to record cello on, it, on a song? And he said yes, and we did the song. And then he texted me and said, hey, I like that song. I really like it. I want it. Can I sing on it? And when a guy, well, one of the greatest singers in the world says they want to do something with you, do it, right? So I said... This song's done, but let's do something better. Let's do a duet. Let's, let's do a duet, me and you. And he said, okay, great. I said, let me send you something tomorrow. So in the shower, I came up with an idea. And I called Nathan up and I said, hey, I was thinking about you in the shower, which incidentally is a great way to start any conversation with any adult. Um, and I said, so we're both dads and we're at home. We're trying to be good dads in the pandemic, coronavirus pandemic. And we love our families, but we're both probably kind of sick of it at the same time. So I said, let's sing a song about that. You know, dads, uh, a dad do it. And he said, I'm it. Okay, so in about a day, the song was written. In a day or two, we recorded it, him at his house, me at my house. And in another day, we mixed it. So what you don't want to do with a guy like Nathan Gunn, who you can look him up, his last name is G-U-N-N. -N. He's, he's has one of the most beautiful voices in the world. You don't just want to slap a pop compressor on him and be done. He's too good for that. So uh, what I did is I, I put mild compressor. I'll switch to the screen. I'll show you what I did. So here's the screen of this song. It's called Getaway. We're actually going to release it on Tuesday. Um, if I have it up before this module goes up, maybe I'll send you a link to uh, the video. We filmed a hilarious video for it, um, uh, if you're interested. Um, you can see over here, I actually do have a bunch of effects on mine and his vocals, but they're all really mellow. I got some EQ, a little compressor, a little limiter, uh, space designer, which is the uh, uh, reverb in Logic, a really nice reverb. Um, but they're all really mild. What you can see on the screen, I've got the automation curves there. Let me make it even a little bigger. And you can tell that I did a lot of automating. Um, so, uh, well, let me just play it. This is me. This is him. Around the home. That child in the room. That used to be the floor. But now it's smart. You can see he's way up right there. I thought it would be nice. 
eyes But now I'm thinking twice A family with a heart Is one in ten Changed a lot right there I know a lot is true He's up there, he's down there now I'm wanting to get away So now let's solo our vocals. That's my punk kid Riley coming in and showing us all up there. But if you listen here. Well, that child ever grown. That used to be the floor. But now it's right here. It's way up. More. I thought it would be nice. But now I'm thinking twice. Let's just focus on the butt right there, okay? You'll notice right here. Blows more. I thought it would be nice. But now I'm thinking twice. So I turned up, but now I'm thinking twice. But was quiet, so I turned it up. You can see here, there's some dialogue bits. His was too loud, so I turned him down. Mine was too soft, so I turned it up. Let's go there. Ice. A family with a heart is one at times apart. That's smart. Thanks. I know our love is true, but now I'm wanting to get away from you. Hit it, kid. And you can hear again, when I say hit it, kid, my dialogue, I turn it up. Uh, I find when I have spoken parts uh, in songs, I'm, I ride the volumes all over the place. I prefer doing that to too heavy compression, which you can, you can really hear the effect. So anyways, um, you can do that on instruments too. I definitely do that on crescendos and on accented notes and things like that. I like to get right in there. The way you do it in Logic is you grab this pencil tool and you can just start drawing, right? You can also do it uh, with a fader if you want. I often just do it with a pencil tool. Okay. So right after I turned that off, I thought of a few other things I wanted to show you regarding uh, vocal editing, uh, sort of pre-mixing, so we're going to do that now. So I just wanted to show you a few things about mixing vocals, or really pre-mixing vocals, editing vocals, with um, crossfades, um, uh, and pitch shifting, and nudging things in time a little bit, uh, which can make huge differences. So first, I'm just going to show you, uh, this is Nathan's part, my vocal part, and my daughter Riley's part, just to hear you what it sounds like with the music before we go into the details a little bit. I thought it would be this, but now I think it's this, I love you every time, but just not all the time. Okay, so that's what it sounds like. Now, if we go in here, you can see a whole lot of different types of edits. First of all, Riley, I have Flex Pitch on, which is sort of their version of Melodyne, which is actually a really, really good version. Uh, it's the, their pitch shifting in Logic is actually quite nice now. I'm going to turn it off for a moment, because I'm going to show you. She actually didn't do anything wrong. I just decided I wanted to. Here's what it sounds like initially. I thought it would be bliss, but now I think it's this. I love you every time. So, and you can hear I've got some effects on her over there. Um, I thought it would be bliss. And here's what it sounds all together. I, I thought, thought it would be bliss. bliss. Now, after listening to it, I decided I didn't want her to sing, I thought it would be bliss. I wanted her to sing, I thought it would be bliss. Because I thought that sounded cooler. So, in flex pitch, I changed that last note every time she sung that. And now you can hear, instead of singing this, I thought it would be bliss. She sings this. I thought it would be bliss. That note's half step up, okay? So, and all together, I just like that. I thought it sounded cool. I, I thought, thought it would be bliss. bliss but, but now I think, think it's this. this. So that's why her track sounds different there. Now, you can see here, These are all different takes. Um, I comped these. I had several takes of every one, and then I flattened them so you can no longer see the different comps. But what I've done is I've crossfaded, obviously, in between each one so that if you can just take, we'll just take me, and you can see the crossfades now sound smooth. I'm, yeah! I thought it would be bliss, but now I think it's this. I love you every time. But just not all the time. Okay, so that is uh, how we crossfade those uh, different programs. Crossfade different ways, but 
Like in Logic, you can just grab the fade tool. You can do a wide fade or a small fade. I like small fades. And you need to be careful. Um, listen to your vocal tracks soloed when you're doing the crossfading, because otherwise you'll notice you get all sorts of like weird breath things where it'll go <laughs> stuff like that because you'll, you won't notice that you crossfade right in the breath. And then later you'll be listening on headphones and you're like, what the hell is that? So, uh, so always uh, do your crossfades or at least audition your crossfades after you've done them solo. Now, if you look at Nathan's, Nathan is easily the most acclaimed singer of the three of us. And you can see there's more cutting up of his track than either of ours. So why would that be if he's such a great singer? He is a great singer. The reason why is um, he recorded at his house, we recorded at our house, and I decided that I wanted to rhythmically have it all locked up with my part. Um, and his part uh, wasn't always exactly on the rhythm and I get really meticulous. So what I would do is I would just cut it up and I just nudge things a little bit this way, that way, so that I just screwed it up. There you go. So that we're all, uh, I, I actually try to make it almost tight, but not so tight that it sounds fake. So all those cuts in his track are not him singing wrong. It's just me uh, fiddling with our rhythms a little bit so they sound simultaneously tight but loose. Here they go. I love you every time, but just not all the time. I thought it would be nice, but now I'm thinking twice. And so this is sort of a like an old Rat Pack type of song. If you listen to it with the instruments now, you can hear it has the vibe that I was looking for. Yeah, I thought it would be nice. Including Riley having that uh, sharp note instead of the uh, natural note and uh, Nathan's rhythm a little bit looser. So you certainly don't have to do all of that on your vocals. I don't do it all the time. As you can see, I did nothing on Riley's up above. I did less on mine. Um, but sometimes it's fun to get really meticulous and really get the vocals to sound exactly the way you want them, even with amazing singers. So I've already gone on a little too long. Here's what we're gonna do now. You are gonna do a mix of the Positive Energy song. And here's how it's gonna work. I'm gonna make all the tracks available. I will spend the next day or so editing them down uh, into just individual song sound files. Uh, I will number them one, two, three, four, five. So you could just put them in a DAW, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it would be in a logical order. Um, and I recommend the Positive Energy song is, is very complicated and busy. I don't think you should add a ton of stuff, maybe a little reverb here, definitely panning things, maybe some EQ. I mean, you can go crazy if you want, but I don't think it's probably gonna to be too beneficial to the song to go too crazy. Um, and you can do different levels, since there's so many tracks, if you want, you can just mix the instrumental tracks, get us the best instrumental mix you can, that's fine. If you wanna just do my vocals, including my demo vocals, where I demo everybody's uh, 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 vocals, so it's fewer vocal tracks for you to mix and work with compression and stuff, that's fine. Or if you want to go crazy and just mute my two demo vocals and add everyone's, that's the, that's the toughest thing because everyone's from a different mic. You want to try to allow their different sort of color and diversity of sound to come through, but also make them sound like they uh, belong in the same song. Uh, you can do that. And I'll, I'll tell you this. Anybody who comes up with good mix ideas for us, we might we, we might use it or base our ideas on some of the things you do. We might even take I might even ask you for your mix and say, hey, can I grab that and tweak it a little? And we might release it that way. Now, of course, if we did that, I would probably ask you to write something down saying you don't expect to get paid anything. None of us are getting paid for this. It's a charity song. We're planning on giving all the money to environmental ca uh, causes if there is any money. Uh, from it, but it would be great to get a credit as either an assistant engineer or an engineer, and maybe that would be something that would be uh, pretty fun, exciting, and in, in uh, as a student in the pandemic, that you actually got a credit on something with a bunch of uh, uh, pretty well-known uh, 
Grammy winning musicians and others on a song. So I'm going to uh, make those files available, write it up for you. And if you guys have any questions or anything, you know how to email me or contact me. Thanks.